who wins. This will be our final game of tonight, and it is, of course, against T over I and Goose. They are our final game. <coughs> Make sure everybody tunes in with us tomorrow. We're going to be here probably hopefully, hopefully not as long. <laughs> but we will be here. Hey, the tournament's actually only going three hours over what we thought it would. <laughs> Did you know that uh, if Goose was going to go to Kiev, like, once they get enough money, mandatory class is not even going to go? Why can't he go? I don't know. No. Yeah. That's going to be really sad. That mandatory cloud is a really big part of their team. Yep. I mean, they could really spare someone like Smithy or Atlanta, but they couldn't spare. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, these names just keep getting more and more creative. <clears throat> All right, getting into games now. We're starting our three-minute wait period, where we just sit here and do nothing for three minutes. This is my favorite favorite part of every game. Let's not do nothing. Okay, let's do something. Look at Atlanta's jungle trinomirs masteries. All right, there it is. Runes. Plus 12 armor pen, plus 26% attack speed. Interesting setup there. You you were the one who just discovered that attack speed runes are pretty OP as of late, right? Eh? Eh? Mm. <laughs> I don't know about didn't, that. Didn't they work on everyone you tried them on? Like, didn't you try them on... Who did you try them on, Mid? Talon. It was by accident. Not Talon. Uh, Zareth. Zareth. They were really OP on Zareth. You heard it here first that's, from Rambo. That's what it was. <laughs> Sarah, Rambo. Tax Peterns are really <laughs> OP on. Uh, I can't even think of anyone they're not OP on. <laughs> well, they're obviously really OP on Zareth. You won the game. And they're really OP on Pantheon. That wasn't the game that you went 1 and 13 on Pantheon, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> How did that jungle pantheon work out for you there, Rambo? So let's look at um <laughs> Oh Masteries by the way, as we're on the account. Skyner, <clears throat> of runs masteries. Fifteen ability power, fifteen armor pen, dodge, and MR per level. Oops, not match history. There we go. Huh, very nice. And masteries? Zero twenty one nine. Very nice. Well done there, Odd Skyner. Let's see what uh Smithy runs on Alistar. Support Alistar. Well it looks like he's got move speed, magic resist, and armor on Alistar. And then for Masteries, he goes 16-14. I think that's actually the same Masteries I do for my support. I go all the way down to the gold, and then I usually do defense. <coughs> and we should be getting the game here in just about 20 seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. They say we cast the entire game just using quotes from champions. I don't know if uh, I remember enough quotes to do that. The rivers will run red. That doesn't make sense. Into the fray. Really dropping the ball on us on Rambo. Super, super disappointed. <laughs> I don't know who says that one, but just didn't didn't even throw out one quote there. Because even now, your loved ones 
suffer. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I think you can come up with one. I'm not doing this. Pardon me for trying to have fun. Okay, waiting for... To get into games, as far as our lane setups go, we're going to have Quirky and Alistar versus Soraka and Vayne. Uh, Soraka and Vayne going to have to be a little bit careful. They do have a good sustain on Soraka, but Alistar is going to be really annoying, and Quirky can... He's just going to go and try to counter by taking this red buff. Smithy's gonna go scouting, but he doesn't actually see him. <laughs> he actually just misses Dan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he is gonna be able to take this red buff with no problems here at all. Skarner is such a strong jungler. Gonna run into Smithy he coming back, though. So he does know that red is gone. Oh, misses the pulverize, and Dan's just gonna go right back to his jungle. But Dan was really sweet, cleared the entire red buff, whereas Trindomir, not so sweet, did not clear the entire red buff. Good guy Dan Din there. Good guy Dan Din. Don't you hate that when you walk into a camp and it's just like that <laughs> yeah. one creep? Oh, stupid minion, yep. Ugh. The worst is when your own teammates do it. when they're the ones who didn't kill the last creep and you're on it's ah. like your roommates leaving dishes in the sink. yeah that's exactly it's what terrible. it's like oh that's such a good such a good example so Skarner does go ahead and clear that camp Lumengard trying to farm at the turret, not being too successful as of yet. He's sitting at 14 CS while Vayne is at 17, so he's still in the game, no problem. Soraka throwing down some wards to help out mid. And they already have the ward here in the tri bush. They have a pink ward there to make sure that they can take out any other wards, but I don't know if I agree with that placement, but whatever. They actually have everything warded right now. Oh, there's the initiate from Alistar, but just kind of getting some harass, I think. I mean, God doesn't actually follow up with anything. So far, been a pretty quiet game here at the five minute mark. There hasn't been a single gank or a kill or any sort of issues. Most exciting thing going on was the uh, jungle invades. <laughs> oh, mid. Whoa. There's the flash <laughs> from uh, Karthus. <laughs> Not sure if it was necessary there, but just in case. <laughs> These creeps were looking awfully, awfully mean. He was uh, picking on Kenna and they didn't like it. Maybe he was just baiting Kenan. He was like, he look, my... Yeah, yeah, yep, he did. You're right. <laughs> okay. So as far as our early game CS goes, and here at the six minute mark, we actually have 37 on Quirky, 39 on Vayne, so they're staying about even. Top lane is 45 on Aurelia and 39 on... 45 on Aurelia and 39 on Malphite. So Aurelia, again, having no problem with that lane up there top, just able to farm. Uh, mid lane, we have 41 on Karthus and 46 on Kennen. So 
Everyone's actually keeping up j very well in farm. And then our jungle, we have Skarner at 36 and Trinmer at 38. So they're also very, very even. And again, like we said, we haven't seen ganks from either junglers at this point. What do you think about this Ken and Karthus mid lineup? I think that um, Kennen, once he gets his Will of the Ancients, he's going to be able to just push Karthus out, just like harass him down at least, mm -hmm. whereas Karthus is going to need uh, some sort of mana to sustain his harass, like blue buff or catalyst or something. Mm -hmm. Whereas Kennen can just do all of that damage and kill Karthus <laughs> and uh, just not run out of energy. Yep, so there is first blood. I didn't miss it this game! I didn't miss it! <laughs> we were able to watch the first blood go down in mid. Great initiate by Kennen. So both junglers are six. Again, like we said, they have it. Neither one of them have really ganked. But uh, Tantin actually getting a lot of damage there on Atlanta. Oh, meanwhile, bottom, though, taking a lot of harass from that Corky. The teleport, though, coming in. Corky's deciding to get out of there, but Malphite Old is just too great a distance able to go in and pick off Corky. That was such a long range there from Malphite Old. And they're going to be able to take Dragon from this, too. Yep. Malphite is bottom, so they do have all five. Trindamir might try to come over and get the smite, but he, yeah, he is going to go for it, but he doesn't manage to pick it up, and then he is just gonna, going to drop. Doesn't even have time to ult. I'm trying to get some damage onto Kennen. Mandatory Cloud is, but Kennen's able to just go right around that wall and pick up some CS. So now three kills in favor of T over I. And this is another one of those teams that seemingly is coming from nowhere. Of course, uh, if they're part of Unrestricted, this team has been around for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. So even if, um, no. I, I don't know if they're, they may not be officially Unrestricted anymore. That was anymore, first yeah? Unrestricted team that became Curse, mm -hmm. then this was like the second unrestricted team, now they're T over I. Yep. So, uh, yeah, definitely 2-0 for Kennen now, so even though he is uh, behind a little bit in farm, he's actually ahead overall. And then... You have the 1-0 for Malphite, who, again, is also behind in farm, but because of that kill, it kind of makes him even, so. <clears throat> they did pick up the dragons, so there is a gold deficit for Goose at this point, but they can make it up if they play well. So... Three kills and a dragon, so Goose really has nothing um, in terms of advantage this game. Dan Din has been waiting there for a really long time. Very patiently. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. Now he's going in. He's coming in for the ulti, and he's gonna uh, get it. He's definitely gonna get it. And that is a dead Carthus. That is a very, very dead Carthus. Doesn't even get the CS. Poor Karthus. Really, really good team play here that we've been seeing. We're actually, both teams right now, they're getting a really hard push bottom here from Goose. And they are going to pick up this turret. There's the initiate from Alistar, but Skarner coming into the fray. Going to try to catch Corky. Of course, his ult is down because he just used it on Alistar, or not on Alistar, but on uh, Karthus. 
Um, Kenan coming in. There's the teleport from Aurelia actually coming down. But gonna have to flash out. Yeah, and Aurelia just teleports in and immediately dies. I'm sure that's not what she wanted to do. Lemon God gonna try to harass them off of this tower with those long range rockets. <clears throat> but gotta be careful to be initiated on. So he had 0-6 now in favor of T over I. Goose just doesn't know how to answer to this right now. Oh, there's Skarner Ultra's backup. Grabs Lemon God. Of course, he is able to escape. There's the ulti coming from Karthus. They're going to get Soraka. <laughs> wow, Atlanta. Wow. He gets an ult. It's the second time that's happened. Huh. A lot of pushing going on from both sides, actually. T over I getting both bottom and top turrets really low. Malphite could be in a little bit of trouble here as Aurelia starts getting her cooldowns back. And yeah, she is going to jump on him, but nope, he does get to the safety of his turret, so she's just going to decide to farm instead. <clears throat> Mandatory Cloud has had a really hard time here against this Ken in mid. He's been farming well, but he just is, you know, 0 and 2 now. Ken in 4 and 0. Not even a single kill for Goose at this point. Balls doesn't have a ward, so he's going to pull back here and throw a ward just to give himself a little bit of added protection while he pushes up this lane. You know, I'm, I, I gotta give it to Goose for being able to keep up in farm in spite of the fact that they're so far behind in kills. Uh, they've been doing a really good job, and actually their bottom lane has been doing very, very well um, up until the point where they just got that ganked, and then they kind of fell behind. But they were able to take out that turret first, which is going to help them in the long run. Lemon God's falling just a little bit ahead, behind on farm, but he's still keeping up really well with Bane. Malphite comes in. There's the initiate onto Kennen. Kennen's going to ult and is actually going to be able to take out Mandatory Cloud. And he's going to be able to pick up Smithy, too. And at this point, Kennen now 6 0 oh, 1. That's going to be hard to shut down. Mm, that's a 5k gold lead in under 15 minutes. Yeah. Not looking good for Goose. And now T over I is going to go ahead and fall back and pick up Dragon. <coughs> Meanwhile, Ball's just farming top still. He's now at 119 creeps, which is the highest creeps in the game, the highest creep score in the game, and he's just going to keep farming that, taking advantage of the fact that they were all a dragon and try to push this lane up a little bit. He's not going to be able to get much damage to the turret, though, before Malphite shows up. Kennen coming in for the jungle invade here. <coughs> I'm going to catch Atlanta. And there's the stun. Just so much damage going out. <clears throat> Kennen though doesn't really know where to go. He's kind of getting surrounded at this point. Yeah, he is definitely hitting the car this wall. There's the pulverize from Alistar. Oh, the flash from Malphite though, trying to counter it. Kennen is going to drop. Malphite is actually going to drop too. And a uh, good pickup there for Atlanta. They actually could potentially Baron, which they just need to. They just have to be careful, and it's going to be hard because they're really low level. It's but really early. Yeah, and, uh, there's three of them right there. Oh, so and I don't know he's if that's doing a good so idea. much damage. It, it, I actually do not think it's a good idea. But if they juggle the damage, okay, they might be able to pull it off. <laughs> but with Skarner there and Vayne and Soraka, and there it is. There's the condemn. 
Mandatory Cloud's gonna drop. Atlantis is using his ulti to try to take down Dan Din, who is just gonna kind of kite him. And Lemon God able to flash out. The Smithy able to flash out. Lemon God does actually go down. As does Smithy. As does Atlanta. And uh, now they could actually get Baron right now if they wanted to. Which I think is exactly what they're going to do. <coughs> Did you notice that Dan Dan just completely foregoes his E spell on Skyner and just backs his Q and W? Oh my gosh, he doesn't even take it. Nope. Wow. It's the one that's a nuke and a heal, too. Huh. Which is weird, because people usually like that one. That's really, really interesting. So Aurelia, actually way overextended here, is going to get caught out of position. And there she's down. So, um... Yeah, this is really just kind of snowballed into T over I's favor at this point. Uh, shows a very good team. I completely had discounted them. Of course, I didn't know who was really on them, but this was definitely not a team I expected to see do this well. <clears throat> and uh, they have really showed that they deserve to be here. I mean, we saw Goose take out Dignitas early, and then now T over I is taking out Goose no problem. So that just shows that T over I really deserves to be hanging out with the big boys. Well, I mean, Dan Dan, of course, has been around for a long time. In fact, most of these guys have been around for a long time. Mm. What you thinking? That was very thoughtful. Mm. Uh, I was thinking uh, part of the reason I think Goose was uh, able to beat Dignitas is they're a lot more familiar with Dignitas. I don't know how many times they've actually played T over I mm -hmm. as a team, so maybe there's that element of unfamiliarity with their playstyle. So <clears throat> that could be just one reason why Goose was able to beat Tignitas. Yep. That's a really, really good point. <clears throat> but Dignitas is still in the game. They have a game against Reflex tomorrow morning, which we should... I'm hoping that somebody will be around to cast. I will not be, but I'm hoping that they're still going to have someone around here to cast that game for you. So make sure to tune in tomorrow morning. Um, Atlanta's going to try to push top tower while they're pushing bottom turret. And it'll be a trade, but... Or not even, actually. Atlanta's just... I mean, he, he's going to stay until he gets the turret, I'm sure. But uh, meanwhile, his whole base is getting kind of rocked bottom. There's a combo from Alistair, but... Dan Din doesn't even care. They're gonna transition over to mid lane and continue their push with the Baron buff. And really, Goose cannot five v five them. No, they're just way too I far ahead at this he point. Under a turret, unless uh, T over I completely misplays it. Yep. As long as Skarner ulti someone that's not Alistair, I think uh, T over I should win, should win the fight. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. <laughs> or they could just keep going, farming or other things. <laughs> like the uh, buffs. Or deny the resources from Goose, as Rubington the Third likes to say. Malphite's actually just gonna straight up tank this turret and they're gonna backdoor it. I'm juggling the turret damage there between all of them, they should be able to do that no problem. Tin -ten taking a lot of damage though. Yeah, Strock actually healed and gave the armor buff to Vayne who wasn't even tanking. tanking the turret. Yeah. It's kinda funny. Doesn't matter, they got a turret, and they're now going to regroup and go to push again. Yep. Vayne has her Phantom Dancer and Bloodthirster. Skarner has his E skill. I don't think he had a choice. Uh, he didn't, but he does have it now, so... 
will be able to include that and discard his repertoire of things he can do in a team fight. Lemon God caught out of position here. Well, could be, but no. Oh, did Skarner just smite that? Yep. Skarner just ran right over and, sm and smote? Smote that red? <laughs> smote. Smote that red. Oh. Uh, Quirky, Quirky out real out of position here. There's the old Kinda pulling him back in. Can it get slow and the red buff proc? Just, and there's the E. See? Did you see that E? <laughs> he got him. Yep. It's a good thing he leveled it finally. Yeah. <laughs> Taunting from Soraka coming out. Looks really hopeless for Goose right about now. Yeah, this Corky is... does finally respawn, but Tia Vra is going to leave their base. I think they're gonna pull back and pick up Baron. I think it's supposed to be up here in just a minute. Yep, they did get it around the 17 minute mark, so it should be up here soon. Well, I don't know, I guess it was a little bit later. They were going for it when, when Goose first started going to 16 minutes. They're going to go ahead and push this tower. There's the initiate from Alistar, though, but unfortunately they just don't have anything to follow up with it. <coughs> they do ult balls into their team. He's going to flash out, but he's eventually going to die. Lemon God is going to... Oh, <laughs> back to this side of the fight. Uh, Lemon God does drop to Kramer, and we have a uh, mandatory... He's going to drop as well. And there goes Atlanta. Yep. Consolation prize. A little consolation prize. And there's the GG coming out from T over I. They have seven seconds to push the rest of this base before Aurelia comes up. And I don't think they're going to be able to push through to the win here because they're just going to all come up, but that did a lot of damage to them. Mm, they do take both turrets. Yep. Dan Din being caught in all the AoEs. Oh, the mandatory cloud is gonna drop. And now balls. Oh no, Atlanta going, spinning into the fray, knocking Dan Din back. They actually are gonna pick up Dan Din. Balls is gonna pick up Kennen. And Atlanta coming in for the cleanup on Soraka. And Malphite, so yeah, there's four. Four down. Just stayed there, overstayed their welcome a little bit too long. I think it might be too little too late at this point. Probably, yeah. yeah even you can see Savion here, like, just doesn't even care. It's 4v1 right now, he's the only man standing, and he's like, I'm gonna run right into their base, which is exactly what he did. I'm gonna pull back and pick up Ray. Yeah, five and one on Vayne, eight and two on Kennen, six and one on Skarner. I mean, even Soraka is two and one. <laughs> two, one, and sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> sixteen assists. Oh. Just disgusting damage there, and actually, I think that uh, they're just gonna go straight for Baron. Atlanta's backing, so Atlanta can't even counter it. He just threw the ward there, and then they're just gonna be able to, like, just... They're just gonna be able to go get it. Yep. And they will see the ward right over there in the lip, so I'll take that out real quick, yeah, and then they're gonna get Baron. Goose just doesn't even have the manpower to respond here. Looks like Soul out... Atlanta going out there. He's going to pop a Shirelius, go in, try to get the seal, and get completely stopped. 
get tons of damage, is forced to ult. Gonna try to kite away, but there's the Skarner ult, and he is going to die. <laughs> Valiant effort. Valiant effort, Lena. Well, Goose gave it her best. Mandatory Cloud's gonna drop. Malphite ult going down on Ball Damn Smithy. Smithy's gonna drop. Lemon God's gonna drop. Ball's just skirting the cannon ult and is able to get back to his base just in time to watch his Nexus die. Or rather, for the the forfeit to come out. Good game. Good game. So that does... I wish I could say that was like our final game, but it definitely wasn't. It was just our final game of tonight. So that means that T over I wow. will be moving on. <laughs> what? You wish you could say that was our final game, really? Well, just meaning that like I feel kind of like the whole night it doesn't quite have the closure. So we're just kind of stopping in the middle of the bracket. Yeah, you're right. You you're know right. what I mean? We need to find out what happens tomorrow. Yep, that's true. So everyone needs to tune in tomorrow. We'll have these games, which are going to be T over I versus Curse. <laughs> um, Tignitas versus Reflex. EST, so 3 p.m. CLG versus TSM. Yep. Still a lot of games left. But yeah, we do have a lot of a lot of games. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of games coming up tomorrow, so everyone needs to make sure to tune in for those. Starting, of course, at uh, well, tune in here a little bit earlier. I think that they're going to be trying to run games at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and those are going to be the Dignitas. Uh, Dignitas vs. Reflex game is going to be going on there. And then starting at 12 o'clock, we'll be doing these round of four games between V8 and whoever wins that Dignitas Reflex game, as well as Curse versus T over I. And I'm just confirming that here. Uh, 